Now, if you've been looking at a career in security or a career in cloud, you will probably have realized by now that cloud security is an extremely hot career option. You see a bunch of companies that were in the data center world now moving to the cloud. And once the pandemic happened, I think the move to the cloud has accelerated quite a bit. So you, we constantly hear globally about the shortage of cloud security skills. So this is a good time to position yourself to become a very strong and very well-rounded cloud security professional. Now in this video, I'm going to be looking at three tips to enhance your cloud security career. And stay tuned to the end because I'm going to be giving out a bonus tip on how you can improve your cloud security career. If you like this sort of content, you should consider liking this video and subscribing to the AppSec Engineer channel on YouTube. This will help notify you every single time we drop a new video on this chat. Tip number one, get good with cloud infrastructure as code. Now remember, when you are doing anything in the cloud, especially when you are on, you're on the cloud, you're typically provisioning resources, creating compute, or provisioning databases, or storage, or what have you. Now, remember all of this, of course, can always be done manually through kicking through the console and stuff like that. But in the real world, this seldom gets done that way, right? In the real world, people are looking to go with infrastructure as code to auto create, auto deploy their resources at scale in a particular region. So if you're using AWS or Azure or GCP, there's a good chance that your company or the company that you want to get employed in is going to be using infrastructure as code. Now, this is the most important thing that you need to figure out. So if you are in cloud security, you need to figure out how infrastructure as code works in the cloud, and you probably need to get hands on with infrastructure as code. So in fact, whenever I do a cloud security class or when we do an AppSec engineer cloud security class, we only use infrastructure as code because that's what helps you understand how the cloud actually works. Infrastructure as code not only helps you automate a lot of the hard work that goes with deploying massive resources at scale. Imagine having to deploy thousand different servers in multiple regions. It's not going to happen with just you doing it manually. You need to use infrastructure as code. You need to manage state. You need to do all of that stuff. Second thing with infrastructure as code, you also are able to deploy security fixes, right? So let's say somebody has made a mistake with their security configuration on the cloud. Infrastructure as code can help you deploy a fix at scale or fix it at scale in any case. So that's one very important aspect of why you need to learn infrastructure as code. Now, which are the different frameworks and products that you have for infrastructure as code? Of course, you have Terraform, you have serverless, you have cloud formation, you have Bicep, you have several options out there for different cloud providers. I personally prefer using Terraform because it works across different clouds. Not only does it work with the big three cloud providers, but it also has modules for other cloud providers like DigitalOcean and so on. So I would, prefer learning Terraform simply because it gives you flexibility. So tomorrow, if you're working on Azure and then you move to AWS or vice versa, or then you move to GCP or whatever it is, Terraform works across the board. And that's something that you should learn. So if you are in cloud security, definitely pick up hands-on skills with infrastructure as code. I prefer Terraform, but that doesn't mean you need to do Terraform. You can use Pulumi, you can use CloudFormation, you can use what have you, CDK, anything like that. So just get good with infrastructure as code, get hands on. Just don't know it in theory. A lot of people just think they know infrastructure as code because they know the theory. Get your hands dirty, figure out how it works, and then you will be in a much better shape when you want to look at a job in cloud security. Now, tip number two to improve your cloud security career is to learn foundational security aspects on the cloud. Now, there are certain services on the cloud that I consider foundational security services. Now, these are typically identity and access management, your key management, and maybe to a certain extent, federated access control. And some of that also comes into identity and access management. Now, I consider learning of these things the most critical, simply because all of the security elements related to the cloud, all of the security, whether you look at exploits or you look at defense, probably is going to boil down to identity and access management. So understanding that for that specific cloud provider or in general for your cloud infrastructure is going to be critical in your success as a cloud security professional. 
most people kind of think about the other services. They look at compute services, they look at database services, and storage services, and start getting into the nitty gritties of that. But really, when you are looking at cloud security, you want to get into these services, especially IAM, identity and access management, or key management services, which is KMS, sorry, cryptographic services for your cloud provider. And this will give you a kind of a bedrock of all of the security across all of these different services. Because at the end of the day, most of these security exploits or security issues that crop up are because of access control, especially on the cloud or compromised credentials, again, leading to access control flaws. So remember that understanding IAM is going to be critical. So definitely play around with IAM. If you're on AWS, play around with AWS IAM or Azure or GCP. All of them have very solid IAM modules, which have a lot of different features, a lot of different functionalities. They have different terms for this. So it's important that you understand how it works. It's also important important that you understand more localized access control elements like resource-based IAM and so on and so forth. So this is something that you need to focus on initially. Of course, once you get started with this and once you get a good grip of this, you obviously are going to start looking at other services, but do not bypass understanding these foundational security services. That will help you get understanding with everything else. And it becomes much easier for you to understand other services rather than the other way around. So understand foundational security services like identity and access management and key management services, and you will be a much better cloud security professional. Let's talk about tip number three. Now, tip number three is all about proficiency. Now, I see on LinkedIn and I see on Twitter and I see on multiple places about people acquiring certificates across AWS, across Azure, across GCP, across Oracle. Now, I have nothing against certificates. There's nothing wrong with that. It's always good to showcase your whatever form that may take. But I do think that it's very important for you to understand that having a deep level of knowledge in one cloud provider can help you not only with that particular cloud provider, but other cloud providers as well. End of the day, you must understand that cloud providers have a similar set of services. And by getting good or getting great with one particular cloud provider, you stand a much better chance of being able to adapt to another cloud provider or another cloud environment with a completely different provider in an equally competent way. So this is something that I want everybody to take home because for instance, let's say you are working on AWS. I think it's good enough or I think it's actually worthwhile to invest enough of your time understanding AWS at its depth and getting better at AWS and getting deeper in your knowledge of AWS first before you let's say more on the Azure or GCP or what have you. So this is something that I want to talk about. A lot of people have surface level knowledge of the cloud and that kind of gets them in soup when they have to deal with complicated situations, when they have to implement complicated things. And that's when their lack of knowledge kind of shows through, including themselves. So this is something that I feel is very important when you're dealing with the cloud. And this will definitely give you a much better standing as a cloud security professional as you proceed with your career. Now, as promised, here's the bonus tip. Now, the bonus tip is all about networking in the cloud. Now, as soon as I said, I say the word networking, I'm sure you think of some old school enterprise data center, think of routers and things like that. And you naturally tend to imagine, hey, isn't that things that we don't have to deal with with the cloud? The very fact that we're on the cloud means that we don't have to think about firewalls. We don't have to think about routers. We don't have to think about all of that stuff from the past. Now, unfortunately, that's not exactly the case. And I'll explain why. To a certain extent, you are right. You don't have to deal with a lot of networking stuff that you would typically had to deal with in a data center in the cloud. For a lot of compute services, database services, you don't have to deal with networking at all. It's completely managed for you. However, if you are going to be employed in an organization or if you're already employed in an organization, there's a good chance that your organization might need to run certain types of compute infrastructure on the cloud with isolation and all of that good stuff, right? So they need to have a bunch of different logical segmentation or they might have to have some kind of isolation between the resources that they're running on the cloud. And this is where things get complicated, especially for people who want to get into cloud security simply because if you don't understand networking on the cloud, this is something that you'll find very difficult to implement or assess or test or do whatever you have to do 
with it. So it's very important for you to think about learning these things because when you understand networking on the cloud, you understand VPCs, you understand the network ACLs, or you have flow logs and things like that. These are very useful things that can help you secure your cloud infrastructure much more effectively, especially when you have to build out this sort of infrastructure for your organization or assess this sort of infrastructure for your organization. So even though networking doesn't look like a very important thing, trust me, you will see that it becomes a very important thing pretty quickly when you're dealing with an organization that needs all of this implemented for their cloud infrastructure or for you to assess their cloud infrastructure. So definitely think about learning cloud networking. Think about how you can integrate with all of the stuff that I spoke to you about so far, especially with infrastructure as code, and that will keep you in very good stead as a cloud security professional because you understand networking. So you'll also understand other intricacies related to computer services and database services and how different services can talk to each other. And you know, the regions and all of those things becomes much clearer when you understand networking in a deep and comprehensive way. So that was our video on the three tips. Now, in fact, the four tips that you can use to improve your cloud security career or even build out a cloud security career. I hope it was useful. We're going to be constantly putting out content like this. So do think about liking and subscribing to our channel, like this video and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate you watching the video. Thank you very much.